Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's vlog is going to be a what I eat in a day, both with vegan and non-vegan options. It's quarter to one in the afternoon and this is my first meal. I've been fasted since about 9 p.m. So by the time I'm ready to eat, it'll be about of a 16 hour window of intermittent fasting. I've been up since eight and it's a Sunday. I've been to the gym and it is definitely time for me to eat something. I'm not so hungry, so I'm gonna use that to my advantage and make something a little bit lighter. So then I can use my calories for dinner and like snacks later on. That is how my portion sizes are so big in the photos that I've been posting. I completely listen to my body, so if I'm not hungry in the morning, I won't eat. It's such a mental thing. I went for so long thinking that I had to have breakfast, um, otherwise I wouldn't be able to function. So it's checking out of uh, thinking that you do need that first meal early to um, kind of give you that energy boost you need, like just getting out of that routine really. I generally eat the same kinds of food, so I have breakfast and lunch options and they're kind of similar. So it's always like a smoothie or like an egg meal with like my added proteins, cheeses and veggies and things like that or a salad. And for dinner, uh, I kind of rotate between like salads and like a piece of uh, protein and just add vegetables and things. So the first meal, I'm going to make a vegan keto smoothie. I've made similar ones in the past. I've posted photos on my Instagram and I've made vlogs before. But this one, I've got kind of a new recipe inspired by Hell. And it's pretty much just to avoid protein powder. A, because I found, um, and a lot of other people found as well, that they were just getting too much of their protein intake for the day in that first meal. And it was leaving them not enough for the other meals. B, we just don't want to use as much processed stuff. So we want to get our protein from natural sources in our food. And C, whey protein isn't vegan and it can actually cause spikes in insulin. I didn't have a problem when I was in ketosis, but I know other people may if they're super sensitive to insulin. And we've also found that the vegan proteins are actually higher in carb and they just don't taste as great. So we've kind of made a new recipe where we can get um, a yummy flavor from like natural-ish sources. So to begin, just grab a handful of ice. Consistency is up to you. So if you want it nice and thick, maybe grab a few more cubes and if you want it thin, fewer cubes. Okay, so ingredients, um, you will, to make this, you will need a blender. So I've got a neutral bullet here. It's much better, more efficient than a regular blender. Uh, so we've got our handful of ice, like I said before, consistency up to you. I've got coconut milk here. This is a day old. So it's actually kind of turned into a coconut cream, which is even better because it makes it thicker. And I really like my smoothie bowls uh, thick. We're going to use two tablespoons of this, so we're going to shovel two tablespoons in. Put that aside. We're going to use a quarter of an avocado. We use the other half later on in the day. Peel this off and you will need scales as well. So I want you to measure everything that is going into the smoothie. So I have, this is 46 grams of avocado. So I'll just take a mental note and I'll log it once I'm done. But for you guys, I recommend that you actually log the food before you eat it. I've made this smoothie a million times so I know exactly what it is. But for future reference, when you are experimenting with a recipe or copying what I'm doing, make sure you log it before you eat it just because you don't wanna to get to the end of the meal and realize that you've used up all of your carbs or your remaining protein or you know what I mean. So this quarter of an avocado goes in. I've made some macadamia spread myself. This one, I prefer to make it myself just because it's less processed. I know exactly what's going into it and it's really easy and quick to make. Uh, macadamia is quite expensive, but it is worth it. I recommend you refrigerate this afterwards because my last batch I left in the cupboard and it like smells a bit funny after about two days. 
It's literally just macadamias, coconut oil, and a bit of water. And I've just kind of played around with the consistency. It's not difficult. I can do a recipe if you would like me to, but it's really, really simple. So I'm just gonna use a teaspoon of this. And that will kind of give it like a nutty sweetness that the um, protein powder potentially did before. Coconut oil. So I'm going to, it's solidified because it's been in the cupboard and it's not too hot here in Sydney. I'm going to dish out two tablespoons, maybe even a bit more. Just get those fats in. Just remember to log it. And then I'm going to melt it in the microwave. And you can even add your MCT oil into the smoothie as well. I've already had a tablespoon of MCT oil and a tablespoon of coconut oil in my morning coffee just for a pre-workout. Uh, so I don't feel it necessary to have another tablespoon now. I'd rather save those fats for later on for a snack in my decaf coffee. So coconut oil is done. We're gonna put one tablespoon in now. we're gonna save put a little bit more in actually only because that's I think that's more than two tablespoons but just make sure you log it and do as you wish um, and then we're gonna save this for the end and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a little while next we're gonna put spinach so I have learnt from hell that you can absorb way more vitamins and nutrients if the spinach is cooked rather than had raw. So what I've done here is I've cooked the spinach this morning and then I put it in the freezer so it is like crunchy and like it won't make the smoothie gross, if you know what I mean. So I'll just measure this out. There's gonna be more water in this spinach because it has been steamed. And that is 48 grams of spinach. So that's, yeah, that's about one handful in my fitness pass. That's really easy to calculate. So I'll put that in. I'm going to put some pink Himalayan sea salt in just to get those salts up for the day. And it like actually tastes really yummy. So just kind of put it in to taste. I just wing it every time. And then we're going to add some cacao. So I found this cacao in the supermarket. A lot of them are quite high in carb, but this one's okay. So per serving, which is 10 grams, so that's, oh, I think that's about like a teaspoon, I'll find out in a second. So carbohydrates, 2.2 grams. I'm pretty sure they've already calculated the net carbs. So that is the net carbs. And then the dietary fiber is 3.1. Um, the fat is really low and the protein's 2.8, but we kind of need this for flavor. Um, if you can go without, that's awesome, but I know that like I need something a little bit sweeter, chocolatey in my smoothie in the morning, and this is much better than the protein powder in terms of protein intake. So I've just pulled out a different little measuring thing, something smaller to measure out my cacao. Regardless, I would like to use the full serving, so that's 10 grams. So that's actually like probably a tablespoon of cacao, which is like quite generous for flavor. And I will pour that in. We're not getting sweetness from fruit, so things like cacao and like salt and like coconut milk, they're really good for adding flavor. Flies just like really Getting him away. Okay, and so next we're just gonna add some filtered water. I've made the transition into using filtered water only because I'm trying to limit my intake of chlorine and like bacterial contaminants that are in tap water. So you can buy those filter jugs, I'll show you again. 
You can buy the filtered jugs from, I'm sure, any kitchen store really and any health food store. I know health food stores have got them as well. It's not, I'm not too pedantic on actually drinking filtered water. I'll drink any water just as long as I'm getting my daily intake. But if I can, I will always go the filtered option. But I won't buy bottled water, obviously, because, you know, environmentally friendly. So, yeah, just put as much water in the smoothie as you would like. It's kind of just dependent on the consistency you like. Oh, actually, I like to add a few leaves of basil. So I've got like four leaves there just for flavor. It tastes really yummy in a smoothie. So I'll put those in. Okay, so that is done and now if I can get this open, just pour it into a bowl or a glass up to you. I'm going to have a smoothie bowl. It's, look, it's not pretty but it tastes good and it's nutritious. Good. But now for the best bit. So the coconut cream that I had before that I was saving, I'm going to show you what I do with it. So I'm just going to use this spoon again. What, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spoon it and I'm just going to drizzle it on top so it leaves like a bit of a, a film on top. There's actually a lot of coconut oil. I might not use it all. So it's just like that, like a little art piece. And then I'm going to pop it in the freezer. Hello, lazy puppies waiting desperately for their vegan keto smoothie, I'm sure. So I think we're done. So this has been in for about five minutes and it's looking so good. Okay, so when I say it looks so good, I don't mean it's a green smoothie. The longer you leave it in the freezer, the thicker it is. So I like my smoothie bowls really thick, so I like to tend to leave them in for a little bit longer. But it's pretty much just so the coconut oil solidifies on top and it kind of like makes like a crunchy biscuit. It's like really yum. Like it's really, really good. And it just kind of, I don't feel the need to put anything on top, but you can always add some extra Himalayan sea salt or some cacao. Okay, so that is my first meal done. So you can add things to it, like flax seeds are really good because it's really good for digestion and things like that. But I'll just go over the macros with you quickly for what this meal is. So in total, it's 528 calories, which is perfect for a substantial breakfast lunch. Um, we have only five grams of protein. So in one of those protein scoops alone, that was like, 21 grams of protein so this is only five grams so it leaves you so much room to uh, use meats and things like that throughout the day or like if you're vegan using like tofu and uh, tempeh and things like that only three grams of net carbs so originally it was 10 grams of carbs but also seven grams of fiber so you minus seven grams from 10 grams and then you're left with three grams and you've got 51 grams of fat, which is awesome. That's like, that's a lot. That's like, that's what's that? Like a third of your total daily intake, which is one of three meals or like one of two meals without snacks. Hi guys, so just checking in my first snack, I guess you could call it. I'm just having a decaf coffee. Um, it is now about 3 p.m. So I'll keep you updated with my snacks. Now I'm going to make some dinner. So this can be a vegan option or a non-vegan option. I'm going to be making the non-vegan option, but all I'm doing is replacing like the tofu or tempeh that would be used for the vegan option with some chicken thigh, which is a fattier meat. I'm going to make a palak paneer uh, spinach curry and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first I'm going to make the base of the sauce and just keep in mind that I've worked all of this out in my fitness pal and I will give you the macros at the end of the meal. Okay, so just to begin, these three ingredients are really high in carb, but when you think about how much curry we're going to be making, um, 
it, it's actually very little onion, garlic, and ginger, so throughout the whole meal. So I've got about a thumb size of ginger going in. I've got two thirds of a red onion and two cloves of garlic. And I'll put all the exact measurements in the description box. And 300 mils of water. This is filtered water. And some spinach. So this hopefully will fit. Change of plan, bigger blender, Nutribullet is too small. So I'm just gonna tip all the ingredients into the blender and just add the rest of the spinach. So this is about 150 grams of fresh spinach. Put the lid on. And so this is the base of our curry. Okay, so I am just heating up a fry pan to high heat and then I'm going to add some coconut oil and I'm going to fry the remaining one third of that onion and some chicken breast. I've got about, I think it was 600 gram there and one tomato. So I'm going to fry all of that together. The tomato will be added once the chicken is browned. It isn't much onion, but it's enough to kind of get the flavor. Like it's better than nothing. So I'll just stir that through. Add my chicken. When frying meat, like chicken, if you're using coconut oil, it won't tend to brown as well as it would when you're using like olive oil. But like just as long as the chicken is cooked through. So once your protein option has cooked through and depending on which oil you've used, I've used coconut oil, whether it's um, olive oil, it's probably browned, but just make sure the chicken is cooked through or your tempeh or tofu has like slightly browned. We're gonna add the tomato. So just one tomato. Like I said before, I'll give all the measurements and um, ingredients and things in the description box. And we're just gonna mix that through until they're nice and soft. Okay, next we're gonna add in the green sauce and we're just gonna boil it until it's kind of reduced. So once the sauce is boiling with the chicken and the tomato and the onion in it, um, we are going to add some soaked cashews. So I know I'm going against like all keto ingredients pretty much, but like I said before, when they're divided into how many servings, the carb content actually isn't that high. So this is a meal that is probably more appropriate if you've had a smaller lunch and breakfast like I have. I have just had that smoothie today, but... Yeah, so we'll see how we go for macros. So I'm just gonna pour the soaked cashews. I soaked them for about an hour in boiling water and so they're nice and soft and crumbly. So I'm just gonna pop those in. And then I'm gonna add all my spices. So what I've got here is I've got two tablespoons of curry powder, one tablespoon of ground coriander, and one tablespoon of garam masala. And I'm just going to stir all that in. So I'm just gonna stir that for a couple of minutes. Just let it thicken up a little bit, maybe decrease the heat a little. And then I'm going to add some Himalayan sea salt. So I'd try and go for about a tablespoon if you're measuring it out, but I'm just going to wing it. You 
can always add more to flavor at the end. And then right at the end, we're just gonna add one generous tablespoon of that coconut milk that I used before that is thickened. Alternatively, if you don't have like an older coconut milk, just use like the top layer of the coconut milk when you open the can and it's more of a cream. And just stir that in. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna have two of those. going to let that simmer for a minute or two. Okay, so alternatively to using rice for to go with the curry, I'm going to make a cauliflower rice. Whether or not you have this is all dependent on how many carbs you have left for the day and your macros and your calorie goal. So if you're happy to just eat the curry without a side such as the cauliflower rice, then I would recommend doing that if you're trying to keep your calories and your carbs low. So what I've got here is 160 grams of cauliflower. I'm just gonna put them in the blender and blitz them up and it's gonna make like cauliflower rice, which I'll then lightly cook. This is the cauliflower rice. Okay, so I've just moved the curry to one side and I'm gonna add just like a generous teaspoon of coconut oil to the pan. Let that heat up. And then I'm gonna add the cauliflower. And I'm just gonna lightly saute that. Just so it's heated and kind of tenders up a little bit. Add some salt. So I'm gonna cook this for about two to three minutes, just stirring it so it won't burn. This is my dinner. Mm. delicious so the macros for this so in one serving 448 calories fats 30.5 grams carbohydrates 15 grams so it is a little bit higher so like i said before you're going to want to have like a smaller lunch and breakfast and protein 36 grams so yeah that's very doable on the ketogenic diet and this wasn't a vegan option but just replace the chicken for tofu or tempeh and there you go it's actually really delicious and really easy to make so i hope you enjoyed so thank you so much for watching today's vlog on what i eat in a day i'll just go over my overall macros for the day so my calorie goal came to 1307 my protein is 41 grams, which is pretty much spot on. My fats are 123.5 grams and my carbs 18 grams. So since traveling, I've cut my, cut my calories back to 1760 calories a day again, only because I felt like I was overeating when I was overseas and I just unnecessary so I've cut it back just to see which results I get and then I'll put them back up once I'm a little bit more in control of the diet but so far I have my my carb goal is 23 so I've got five grams of carbs left and enough fats to have one of my little um, fat bombs that I made in my last what I eat in the day so just jump back a couple of vlogs and have a look at that and yeah, I think I should be pretty well spot on my calorie goal as well. But thank you so much for watching and I look forward to receiving more messages from you and I love reading your comments as well. So yeah, again, thank you so much for the support. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.